Hello everyone, we're back in the studio today for demo three and demo three is connected to chapter five, color interaction. And within chapter five, our first uh, group of studies will be looking at how color can be changed uh, by placing it next to or within um, other color grounds. Uh, so when we do these studies, we will look at changes that take place in value, hue, uh, and saturation. So for this demonstration, the first thing I'm going to talk about is what the studies represent, how to create uh, our study format uh, so it's efficient, um, precise, and uh, easy to navigate because the studies themselves uh, can be quite complicated. So let's take a look at that next. Okay, now for a quick review about what the color studies um, represent. So in part five, color interaction, there are five studies. Uh, and these studies basically represent an investigation or exploration of how our perception of color uh, can be changed when a color is placed on different colored grounds or is surrounded by other colors. So these changes occur in value, hue, and saturation, and a color can look completely different uh, when it is placed on another color ground. So as you move through each of the color um, interaction studies uh, that you choose, be mindful and patient of the process as you select uh, an experiment and explore with each of these color uh, study modules. So if you decide to choose one for value, saturation or hue, and your target is either about increasing um, a value change or decreasing a saturation in a color or providing um, a transition from a, a one hue to another, uh, and creating these optical shifts in the color, uh, just remember it is an exploration. Um, each of these uh, color interaction studies um, are much like uh, optical science experiments uh, based on color. Uh, so that concludes uh, this part of what the color studies um, represent. And for the next part of the demo, I'm going to talk a little bit about the format. Okay, so this is the last part of our demo for our beginning uh, color interaction studies. And I've moved the camera a little bit closer so you can get a better view of the colors uh, and how they change when I place them on different grounds. So this is a completed uh, module that I've done. This is the first uh, color interaction study. Uh, in part five, it is the study where you change the value of your color um, tile. So this color tile is the same color, but when I place it on these different grounds, I get a slight shift. And I think, uh, I think you can see that, right? So this is a mid-range gray tile. On the black, it looks lighter. Uh, on the uh, lighter gray, it looks darker. On the red, uh, it looks a little bit more intense, right? It looks a little bit richer, perhaps in its saturation. Uh, the value seems to be up a little bit more as well. And uh, on the less uh, sort of saturated red tile, the one that's sort of in a muted or almost uh, tint-like quality for red, uh, the tile also seems to take on a deeper appearance and doesn't seem as bright. Uh, so this is the basic goal for many of these studies. Um, you're looking and observing how this color interaction takes place, what kind of optical shifts may occur when we change the ground and relationship uh, to our little color tiles. So this is the first one, um, and this is a two inch by two inch square. I have five of them. Each module uh, that you put together for each study that you choose will all use two inch by two inch square tiles and you'll have to do five individual um, little comparisons, right, with each uh, color interaction study that you choose. So this is the one I made, and it's also uh, backed with cardstock, and then my uh, chips 
are also cardstock. They're two inch by two inch squares that I cut from cardstock. And my color tiles are made um, some from cardstock that were painted directly, and then others are just swatches um, of uh, newsprint that have been painted um, with different colors. As I've moved through each of these little studies, I've continued um, to paint swatches. So I have lots of reusable swatches, and I suggest you do the same. So if you are doing your free studies and you have leftover paint, make swatches. If you have swatches left over, I suggest for this part um, of our color interaction studies that you continue to cut away um, colored swatches uh, and mount those uh, to these little um, two inch by two inch uh, cardstock squares because ultimately uh, the more you have you'll be able to sort of mix and match uh, many more variations which will in turn I think provide more efficiency uh, in solving these uh, color puzzles. So here's a here's a swatch I've marked out two inch squares I've also marked out uh, a space where I can cut away um, these little tiles from each of my swatches so for every swatch that I cut away um, a two inch square from right I'm also cutting away tiny chips. Um, and you can create a container, right? So this one has markings for uh, the chips. Um, this one has marking for squares and chips and I'll cut these out in a second. Um, so the more that you make, I um, suggest that you get a little container for your chips. You can store them all in one place uh, and keep some sort of order to your experimentation. Uh, and that goes for the larger tiles as well. You can put them in a box or another container uh, and then break them out when you decide uh, to choose one of the color interaction uh, studies uh, that you would like uh, to start. Um, so that's it as far as the format. So let's take a look real quick um, at one experiment uh, with these two uh, tiles that are both a sort of um, light, almost mid-range violet, right? So we're gonna put these tiles on this um, ground first, the red, the sort of deep red and yellow. And if you can see that, you can see that change, right? This appears almost to go into a desaturated uh, gray. Uh, and this one brightens up a bit, has a higher contrast, um, and seems a little bit more saturated uh, than the one on the right. Um, so that's sort of a nice, interesting effect optically. Uh, that shift is, uh, I think, readily apparent um, for those two grounds. So let's see what happens when we move it um, to the next ground. Wow. Oh. And there you go. We get another um, kind of interesting shift with that, right? So it seems uh, much brighter on the darker ground and that I think that dark ground is blue um, so that is showing some of uh, those relationships uh, to the violet which has a blue intermixture with red right um, and this has a reddish intermixture as well uh, I think it may have had a mix of some yellow in it too um, but this looks very gray now still violet but lighter in value um, so that's a definite shift and so as you do these experiments, um, pay attention uh, to the effect of how the ground pulls on that color that's nesting or sitting on the top. Uh, that is one of the elements that's discussed part five uh, on color interaction is how that ground, um, how the ground color pulls on the color uh, that rests on it. So. If I have a ground um, that is red, and then I have a color like violet sitting on that red, uh, the ground will pull the red then um, from uh, this violet, and so we should get a bluer tendency. Um, and in this case, I think it holds true uh, for the red mixture that is part of violet, and then the mixture here for my green, which is blue and yellow. Uh, so if I have a dominant blue, perhaps bias in this ground for this green, it is the blue that's being pulled away 
um, from my top color because it's the ground that pulls from that top color. Um, and you can kind of see that here. Uh, this chip on this ground uh, seems a little bit more red-like and it also seems brighter um, or lighter in value. And same goes for this um, side. This mixture here is more of a gray. I think we have some yellow um, in this mix. So the pull isn't as effective on this tile and we get sort of a gray uh, muddled effect and the tile and the saturation also does not seem as intense. Um, so this is what you will do with each of your um, color interaction studies. You have to be patient. You have to run a lot of different um, tile groupings and grounds together. Uh, observe those outcomes. I would suggest paying close attention to the book. Take notes if you have to. And then make sure that you are targeting uh, those objectives carefully um, so that you can generate um, some good outcomes with your color interaction experiments. So let's look at these tiles real quick one more time uh, on the white surface so we can get a sense of what their sort of true um, colors are without being really pulled on by the ground. And there you go, right? We have that nice, um, that nice bright sort of violet um, value. Um, it's kind of uh, it's kind of intense, right? Um, all right, so that's it. That's how uh, you should go about doing this. So for the next part, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to set up um, a jig so you can get these centered on your tiles, and then how you would go about mounting your color swatches on cardstock. Uh, so you have these sort of tiles that you can play, mix and match, and then when you have all the ones that you think are a success or meet your targeted objectives. Uh, for each individual color study that you choose, you can mount it to a piece of cardstock. So it's nice and neat. And this way it'll serve as sort of a color interaction index uh, so you can refer to it later. All right, so let's look at that next.